Right, hi there folks, welcome to this week's video. So this week we're going to be taking a look at the Swedish Army LK35 and all the mods that I've done to it. Right, so here we are, we're down on the marsh, it's a bit of land that I use, I've got a permission to use this bit of land. Um, I'm going to build a fire I think, to be perfectly honest, it's a little bit chilly down here today, I wasn't expecting it to be that cold today. So what we'll do is we'll get a fire on the go and we'll take a look at the, uh, the LK35 that I've got on my back and all the mods that I've done to it. take a look at the LK35. I've had this this bag for about I think it's about five six years now and I haven't really used it as much as what I could do. Um, it's an absolute fantastic bag for things like bushcraft. It's not an overly light bag but it is very very nice to carry. So it's a 35 litre canvas rucksack. It literally has just one main pocket with another pouch inside of it there that you can store things into. Um, it's on a metal frame, so looking at the back there, it's literally just hung over a metal frame there with two sort of canvas back supports here. So there's no hip supports on it, neither. So, the first mod that I'd done with this was probably about three, four years ago. I mixed up some linseed oil and some beeswax and I completely painted the whole canvas rucksack in that mixture, stuck it in the tumble dryer and just let it seep into that, much to the missus's despair, should I say. So that's waterproof dip. The actual lid of the jacket is waterproof. It has got like a rubber sealant underneath it there, but I've completely waterproofed the whole um, sides of the, the bag. It has on the front here a little clasp and then a loop inside here, which I'll show you a little bit later for an ax to sit on. Two loops that run from underneath. You can see where I've got the, uh, the rain disc in underneath that runs up onto the two lid clasps here. And then on the top, you've got another two further clasps as well to stick like a bed roll, blanket, something like that on the top there. So I really love this bag. I've used it not as much as I wanted to, but um, there was always a few mods that I wanted to get done on it. Um, and I never really got around to, to getting the mods done. But finally, I've got around to doing the mods and I'll just show you what mods we've done to it. So the first mod that I've done, okay, you can hold an ax through the loop and attach it onto the clasp on the front here. But I wanted to keep this a little bit more free so I could actually attach stuff on the front if I needed to. So the first thing I wanted to do, or the first thing that I've done, was attach my axe onto the actual metal frame. So what I've done here is I've run an M8 bolt, I've drilled a hole through the frame, attached an M8 bolt onto the side there, and just put a wing nut on the bottom there. And then I've just made a lever clasp on the top and that's just been pop riveted onto the frame here with just a little push clip on the side there. Right, so, so that little modification didn't cost much at all. All it cost me is just an M8 bolt and a wing nut to be able to attach my, my axe onto my frame there. It's quite a nice position where that is. It's out of the way, it's sort of attached to the frame, it's solid and it sort of tucks behind the bag there. So I'm quite happy with that. The next thing that I wanted to do was attach a couple of side pockets onto here. So all of this gear that you need can come from militarymark.co.uk. So these are Swedish Army um, side, or the pouches are Swedish Army surplus as well. These cost about eight pounds. Uh, with that, you get a full yoke, a webbing set, um, and a belt with it as well. So that was absolutely brilliant because everything that I needed to do the mods on this uh, bag, I could use everything that came with the pouches here. 
So to attach the pouches, now there's a little bit of a schoolboy error on here. I have actually attached these pouches a little bit too high up onto the bag. So please, if you're thinking about doing this, make sure you bring them down a little bit further so that you haven't got to tuck that side of the bag under when you're closing the bag because that wants to come down over the pouch. So do bring these pouches down a little bit further. So the pouches themselves, there's one on each side of the bag. So the way I've attached these is where you've actually got the canvas sewn here. I've sort of measured at the bottom here to get them sort of just in the bottom and then to have them straight as they come through. How I attach them, what I did is I've just attached, um, I've just used rivets on each corner just to hold the bag into place. So what I've used is I've used the leather, leather sewing all just to run down the side here, all hand stitched around the bottom and around the side. I've left the top open so there is the possibility of stuffing bits down the top there as well. The other thing that I've done with this pocket is I have left a space unstitched at the bottom here, so this is for a future modification. My buck saw will actually be able to slide down there and then at the base here I'll just create a little sort of leather clasp bucket which I'll rivet onto the bottom of the bag so that the buck saw can slide down the bottom inside there. So as you can see the bag itself, it literally is just hanging on your shoulders. You're taking all the weight on your shoulders. So what I've done is utilizing the webbing straps and the belt that came with the side pouches that I've mounted onto the side. I've clipped those onto the frame using some pop rivets. So I've actually got a belt now that I can strap around here. So there's a bolt and there's a rivet on this side here. Whereas on this side here, there's two rivets that go onto the frame here, which has gone through the, the belt itself. So we've now got a belt that we can put around our waist so we can take some of the weight onto our hips. The only other thing that I've done is using a piece of the webbing that came off the webbing with the side pouches. I've just sewn a piece of that together just to make a loop for the belt to go in to keep that nice and tight to my body. So as you can see here, I'm quite loose on my shoulders here, so I'm taking all of the weight on my hips, which is what we want. The thing with bushcraft, this isn't a light kit, I must say, it's not a light bag, and especially with bushcraft stuff, bushcraft stuff especially if you're using army surplus stuff it is not lightweight so you're not going to be walking absolutely miles with all of this stuff obviously this is army surplus this has been sitting around for ages and ages and ages so I just done a little bit of sort of refurbishment on the leather part of the belt here itself so I've just uh, give that a clean up I've re-dyed it and um, I've just put some dubbing on it as well so the other thing I wanted was something just to hang a set of gloves off really so with a piece of webbing that came with the side pouches, I've just cut a piece of that off and then I've used the leather sewing all just to create a little piece onto the shoulder strap here and then utilising one of the clips that came with the webbing kit as well so I can hang my gloves onto that shoulder clip. So the final, final bit of modification I've done to this bag. So what came with the webbing kit was also a water bottle um, cover. So I have the actual water bottle as well because I, I love Swedish Army surplus stuff. So I did have the water bottle at home. So what I've done is through the bag, I've just marked out four holes and I've used a couple of screw in rivets and um, I've just put them through the bag, screwed the, the cover onto the bag. And then what we have is on the side here, which is easily accessible with one hand, you've got your water bottle inside there as well. Right, so let's take a look at what I carry in my bag. So in my right hand pouch here, um, I've got basically my fire lighting gear in here. So that's me, um, my Beaver Bushcraft um, Tinder pouch inside of there. I've got my Baco Laplander saw. I've got my stringing kit for a tarp. I've got some Nordic Summer, so that's a mozzie repellent. So I don't really need that at the moment. So that's normally what I carry in that pouch there and the great thing about these side pouches here is they've got this piece of elastic with three sort of holes on the, that go onto the clasp there so depending on what you're carrying this can actually extend there so that's quite handy as well other side so in this one here what I've got in here this is normally my cook gear and my coffee gear and stuff like that so I've got me um, 
my kitchen utensils inside of here. So this is a roll that I've made inside of here. You've probably seen this in a few other videos. So I've just got all of my, my cooking and eating stuff inside of there. So that is in that pocket. Um, I've got my coffee bag. And then finally I've got my cookser. And then of course at the bottom there, as you've seen, there's my bottle of water. Right, main pouch wise, obviously this depends on what I'm doing really, on what I actually shove in here. So today I just got some camera gear. I've got one of my real termat meals. We've got um, salmon and pasta we're gonna have today. Eagle kettle and my stand and everything inside of there. And then I've also just brought down a DD hammocks tarp just in case it decides to rain. And then an eating kit and a spork. Looking in this bag here, like I said, it is just one big, big pouch in the front there. You do have this piece in the back you can shove, um, like your eating kit, I stick like um, a mat to sit on or something inside of there. But it is a massive, massive area. If you look on some previous videos, I have actually put the Anave Horizon stove inside of here, so that does fit inside of here as well. So you can get tons and tons of gear inside of this. Tons of videos out on YouTube about the LK35, so I'm not going to go too much into it. I just wanted to show you what modifications I've done to it and the reasons why I've done the modifications. Right guys, so there we go, that's this week's video. Thank you for watching. I'm just gonna finish up, wait for the water to boil, have a brew and have something to eat. So that's the Swedish LK35. Really recommend it, it's about 30 pounds for the bag, eight pounds for the webbing pouches, plus the postage from Military Mart. The link to Military Mart is in the description below. Get hold of a bag, mod it as much as you want. There are tons and tons of videos on YouTube, all the different modifications and different configurations that people have done for themselves. This is how I've done mine. Um, I just thought I'd show you how I do my bag. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next week out on the next one.